Hello and welcome to this lecture. If all went well, you have installed Blender with the help of previous lectures, or maybe you already had Blender installed. Please open up Blender now and follow along with this lecture. If you're using Blender on a laptop, you may not have a keyboard with a numeric keypad, also called number pad or numpad. If that's the case, you won't be able to do certain functions in Blender, such as switch views with the number pad. But we can fix this by setting a preference. So follow along with me and go to Edit, Preferences, and here under Input, you can check the box Emulate Numpad, and this will make the number keys along the top of your keyboard emulate the number pad, allowing your laptop to be fully functional. The preferences are automatically saved as you can see here. So let's close the preferences and let's continue. Blender on macOS works almost the same as on Windows 10, but the keyboard on the Macintosh is different than the PC keyboard. Instead of using the control key on the PC, you sometimes use the command key on the Mac. For example, to save as, you use shift control S on the PC and shift command S on the Mac. Unfortunately, Blender is not consistent when it comes to this. When a shortcut doesn't work, I recommend using the menu or the toolbox described later in this lecture to see what shortcut is used. This course is recorded on a PC. The first thing you see when you open up Blender is the default layout, simply named Layout. You can see the names of these layouts and these tabs. Layouts make it easy to do different tasks like modeling, painting or animating for example. They only show you the tools needed for the task at hand. We'll stay in the default layout for now. Each layout contains different parts. These parts are called areas, and each area contains an editor. An example of this is the 3D viewport here, and the timeline here. Each area contains regions with tabs and panels, which can have buttons, controls, and widgets. Let's have a look at the 3D view. We have two quick menus, one on the left, where we have the tools and the gizmos along with the toolbar. Click T for tools to hide or show this menu. Be sure to hover your mouse over the viewport. Here you can find tools to transform your object like move, rotate and scale. You can also call these tools with shift space. There's a second quick menu on the right that you can call with N for number. Here you can change settings like the position of an object or mouse by using numbers. And there's a third quick menu that shows up after an operation. For example, when you scale the default cube, the operator shows up. So here in the left bottom corner, you can fine tune your last operations. So let's now undo the scaling, like so. In Blender, almost every key in the keyboard has a shortcut assigned to it. There's a cheat sheet attached to this lecture for you to download and use as a reference. An easy way of finding Blender's operators is to use the search function or toolbox as it's officially named, which you can open by pressing F3. You can type in the operator you need and select it or try to memorize the shortcut next to it if there is any. Let's try this. Hit F3 and type in rotate and then hit enter. As you can see, you can now rotate the selected object. Hit escape to cancel out. Maybe you can't get it to work because there is no object selected. I'll hit Alt A to deselect the cube. Hit F3 and enter. Now we can't rotate. And with the left mouse button we click on the cube. And we can rotate again. I use the search option a lot and never use the cheat sheet myself. When you start with Blender, it can be difficult because there are so many shortcuts, but once you get used to it, it works very intuitive and fast. I have a quick tip for you. Let me set this up by opening up the second quick menu for you by hitting N and changing some numbers. You can copy values by hovering over a field and then hit Ctrl C and hovering over a second field and hit Ctrl V. So you don't have to go into the fields, you just have to hover over them. In case you mess up your preferences by trying out different things in Blender by hitting random keys, you can go to the edit menu and go to preferences and choose load factory settings. Yes, we want to do this, ok. And don't forget the emulate numpad. If you've turned that on, it'll turn off again. So turn it on again. And as you can see, if I do a load factory settings, 
it'll be turned off again. So turn it on if you need that and then close your preferences window. The goal of this part is to get you more comfortable with Blender in general. I would like you to open Blender or start a new document by pressing Ctrl N and then start pressing keys on your keyboard, click on buttons in the editors, press mouse buttons, scroll and drag along with your mouse and do whatever comes up and see what happens. And don't be afraid to break anything because you didn't make anything yet. And if the program breaks you can always reset to factory defaults like I explained in this lecture. Do this for a couple of minutes and then go on to the next lecture. Bye bye!